Welcome! I'm Yuan Nielsen. And I'm Lincoln Murphy. And this is Impact Weekly. We're here to help you make your customers successful. Each week, we answer your most pressing customer success management questions by relying on our years of experience with companies around the world. Let's get this going. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. It's time for Impact Weekly. Another week, another question to uh, go through. So this one we got just recently. Is there a way to scale the CSM job? Can we build relationships and make customers successful without personal contact? Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Can we scale the CSM job? For sure, right? Right, yeah, for sure. But I think the other part, I think the latter part of this question is of course the the like the more um yeah, the more interesting one and the the one I think a lot of a lot of customer success teams out there are contemplating uh, and that's the part how can we can we what can we do without personal contact right and i think here we here we need to i think we need to start here with why why do we want to do this right yeah i mean there's even though there's there's two questions in here and and they're they're definitely separate but just in here there's there's a lot going on there's a lot to unpack um, yes. and, and this is not something that is, it, these are not unique questions, uh, which is why obviously we, we wanted to cover this because I know a lot of people have these questions. Um, I think you're absolutely right. We, we need to start with, okay, so why do you feel the need to, to build a relationship or make customers successful w- without personal contact? What's going on there? Um, yeah. do, are you trying to. Uh, save money? Are you trying, you know, is, is this sort of cost center thinking versus, you know, where, where we really want to be, which is sort of profit center or, or growth oriented thinking? Yeah. Um, are you, are your CSMs or, or are you as a CSM like over capacity, e- either something that you know that's quantifiable or do you just feel like you are just completely overwhelmed and overworked? Yeah. Um, or is this the preference of the customer? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's very possible. So that's what I want to dig into is that's what I would, you know, if I was working with this person, I would, I would ask those questions and that's what we can dig into now is like, okay, yeah. so which one of those is it? And, and the approach that we're going to take is going to be different depending upon the answer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's uh, that's very uh, key distinction there. Is this something coming from the customer, uh, or is this coming from us trying to remove personal contact for some reason? And then we need to dig into why do we want to do that? Is it because we have less resources, or are we looking at this in a cost perspective, as you say, right? Um, and uh, that's not not what we believe is the right approach when you think about proper customer success, of course. But uh, I think if we start in that end, like I I think anyone who I myself have done this several times in different companies, have you ever tried to build like an e-learning or product tour or knowledge base? I mean, you know that this will be uh, without personal contact, but we also know my experience is that this will never do all the job we need to get done as customer success. Right. Yeah. I mean, right. And, and each of the, you know, if, if a vendor sells you these products that do those things, or um, if you just see them as something, you know, sort of your your confirmation bias kicks in and you're like, Oh, you know, I I don't want to have personal contact with my customers. So, you know, these things will definitely solve for that. And then you put them mm. in place and it turns out that they don't really on their own, they're not, they're not going to replace personal contact with the, between you and the customer. They're just not going to. So no. not saying they're not useful, not saying they're not useful as part of an overall um, engagement strategy. Exactly. But that's exactly it, right? They have to be part of an overall engagement strategy. So we go back to, why are we doing this? And yeah. if, 
if, if you're doing this for any reason that is not customer centric, so, and let's be clear, if you're trying to get rid of personal contact with your customer and that is not what your customer wants, you will be violating their appropriate experience, which will likely lead to them uh, not feeling successful, which yeah. very often leads to at best contraction at renewal where they sort of right size their account and um, you know, they stay, but they just pay us less for the privilege yeah. or they might churn because right. they're not getting their full desired outcome met. So, you know, this yeah. is not, this is not it, it, something to be taken lightly. This can have these decisions can have a very direct impact on uh, your ability to make your customer successful. So yeah, uh, be, be very yeah. careful. And I think it's a hot, like a, or a hot topic, but a, it, it's a common topic. And I think in, it's a lot of it discussed a lot uh, is this product led growth concept. So I think let's, let's maybe touch on that as well, because I, I hear sometimes teams and organizations looking at going from uh, going to a product led growth um, motion or whatever they call it. And, and somehow that can be done and we don't need to have contact with our customers. Um, and I think that's, that's also something that can be a mirage or something that we, an illusion that we think is going to solve everything. Um, and I, I think it's quite interesting to maybe just touch on that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I kind of, I kind of giggle a little bit because product led growth is this, this really interesting, um, buzzword for sure. Um, it's this idea that, well, our, our product can sort of lead the way to growth. I don't know that I needed to actually say that out loud. <laughs> um, but if you look at it's so talk about illusions and mirages. If you look at the top product led growth companies out there, uh, you know, Slack was a great example. Um, Atlassian, um, mm, yeah. Aha is maybe a lesser known one, but they they kind of bootstrapped their way to a hundred million dollars through product led growth. Um, you look at all these companies that that are like the 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 companies that everybody says you know they're this is the epitome of product led growth. Well, yeah, but if you if you understand what's going on behind the scenes, and by the way, they've been very transparent about this. They yeah. usually have very significant sales organizations and very significant customer success management organizations. Um, the product led growth motion uh, is usually at sort of the, the top of the funnel. Um, right. It's, it's self-service sign up and then humans take over from there to intervene. So, you know, if, a, if, a, if somebody signs up for your product in a, in a self-service way, but they work for a company with 2,500 employees, Exactly. Somebody from the sales assist motion <laughs> is going to reach yeah. out and try to try to sell them. Um, yeah. You know, so even in a product led growth company, um, that human human engagement is still critical. Exactly. So we uh, uh, and you have to I understand think it's, that. It's not, yeah, and I think it's natural because when you. If you, I mean, I think as I mean, it, there's a lot of great things to pick up from product-led growth for sure. sure. Uh, similar to what we talked about earlier with e-learning and uh, knowledge base and product tours. I mean, those are awesome uh, helps and tools to use. Um, so there's a lot of inspiration to be taken there. But what what happens in product-led growth companies that's when they scale is that the, especially in the bigger enterprise uh, settings. Uh, the customer expects to get more help. It's hard. they need to deploy this across several teams. They want to achieve other things. They have higher goals. They want to monitor other things. And all of a sudden, it's uh, it's very much uh, high engagement, customer success, personal contact uh, scenario again. So uh, right. I think that's. Um, I think I think uh, sometimes I think as you said there. Uh, product like growth, when they scale, it's a lot of customer success, actually. It is. Now, I will say companies that sort of self-identify as product-led growth will often have more advanced um, 
sort of systems in place. So this is really where yeah. the concept of like rev ops, so revenue operations, which sort of brings together sales, marketing, and customer success um, at an operational level. You will see PLG companies with with more advanced rev ops organizations to really ensure that sales, marketing, and customer success are actually working together. Yeah. Um, because PLG companies tend to just in their, their nature tend to want to be more efficient. Um, and, and also will tend to use technology to accomplish that. Uh, whereas companies that just don't self identify that way, not saying they're not looking for efficiencies, but you might not see as, as much, you might not see a full rev ops team. You'll still see sort of siloed sales, customer success and marketing, things like that. So, you know, I'm not saying PLG is all just something completely made up, but yeah. I do want to just make sure everybody understands that, that it's still human powered uh, at the end of the day. And, and so, you know, with that, because even, even in a PLG type of company, uh, human power is still required. So I think now it's time to talk about, okay, so how do you scale your humans? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are some things that you can do either exactly. as a head of customer success to, to scale your CSMs or as a CSM, like what can you do to just try to be more efficient so you can yeah. handle your workload? Definitely. So I think this is, this is, uh, like approaching this question in the in in my mind uh, the right way is to look at how do we uh, with our personal contact have a higher impact. Mm. I think that's that's the how you can re reframe this question uh, to help yourself look at what can be be can done can be done and improved here. So uh, and with higher impact, I mean higher impact for the customer. How, right. What can we do with our interactions, with our personal contact that have a higher impact, get them closer to their goals, get them above their goals uh, and get them onto new goals and all those things that are uh, the, the, the main, the main uh, driver for customer success. Right. So I think that's, that's, uh, that's a way to look at this. Yeah. I mean, I think if, if you are currently feeling very inefficient, your meetings are not super effective. Um, you just feel like you're spinning your wheels, wasting a lot of time. Then your, your, your inclination is going to be, well, okay. It's because of that human interaction, that human contact, that personal contact that I'm having with the customers. That's the bottleneck or that's the problem. And I, I think that to your point, we need to reframe this. That's yeah. not, really what's what's going on here um you know i i as an example yeah. um if you have a let's say you have a one hour call yeah okay? and on that call you um you just kind of go through some configuration with the with the customer you you set up the product you you walk them through the product and you know everybody feels good coming out of that call okay you know we we, we made some progress. We got, we got them familiarized with some things. We got some, some, something set up, but you know, then it's like, gosh, was that really the most, you know, most effective use of my time? Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, then you keep having to have meetings like that and the customer is not really making the progress that they need to be making. And they're, they're certainly not making any progress towards their goals because they're not doing anything on their own. They're waiting for these meetings with you. And if you, if that's your reality, then you're going to say it's this, this personal interaction that's causing exactly. me to not be effective. Yeah. What if you were able to take a look at, at what you're doing currently in a, a synchronous fashion with your customer and say, okay, these things could be carved out to what we call just async. So yeah. I could deflect some of this stuff to self-service, like give them videos to watch, um, yeah. you know, instead of me going through the product, like here's a video of it. I could even do that as a, as a loom for them. So it's, it's something that I've done for them specifically, but I don't have to sit there on a call with them, right? I can walk them through this and say, go do this stuff on your own. Uh, self-serve, you know, deflection to other self-service modalities. Um, and, and then we make our meetings, yeah. the actual 
you know, human contact, personal contact time that I'm having with them, to your point, you know, on m- much more high impact. So, you know, one of the things I hear all the time is I don't have time to do goal discovery with my customers. Yeah. It's like, okay, but you do have Super time to common, sit there. Right. right. Yeah. I, I mean, all the time, but you have time to sit there and, you know, do this configuration with your customer. Like yeah. you are prioritizing the wrong things. So that's what I would say. Like, look, just, just exactly. do an audit or just, you know, kind of take a look at, yeah. am, are the meetings that I'm having the, the highest and best use, to, uh, use of, our, of my time? Because the time is the thing that you don't have an unlimited supply of. So make your, cust- make your interactions with your customers much more impactful. And, and you know, so async versus synchronous, carve out the async stuff yeah. and just do the stuff that only you can do with your customer. That's what meetings should be about. Like, these are the things that we have to do together. Um, exactly. Everything else should go should go to some other modality. And then that's also where joint accountability really comes into play. Like, you need to hold them accountable to do this work between the meetings, yeah. right? So the meetings are not about doing the work with them. The meetings are about, you know, like kind of reviewing their progress, making sure that they're doing what they need to do, planning ahead, staying higher level and, and strategic as much as possible. Um, all of that I think is, is if, if you just did that and just took a look at, at what you're, you know, how you're actually interacting with your customers, I think you'll find a lot of places where you can make things much more efficient and much more high impact. Um, and also just, again, you know, get the customer to be doing more of the work on their own, uh, which yeah. will just take a lot of the work off of your plate. No, but definitely. I think both, I mean, both those parts and, and the, this having a look at what, what I'm doing, what am I spending time on that could be deflected? And we know this, we talked about this previously in the podcast as well, that we, I mean, we actually do more support than we do customer success sometimes. And that's that's usually a big talking about scalability. If you can, if you can remove time from that, doing that type of work and, and put it into this, what we call the high impact work, that's a, that's a great leverage you have. And maybe that's adding more resources in support or adding more resources in onboarding or whatever it is as well. So it's, um, I mean, of course, you, may, you, you that's kind of decisions that are more on manage, management level. But this is where you, if you want to scale, this is where you, you can find a lot to improve. Right. I mean, this is stuff that you could be doing on your own as a CSM. Um, you know, you may have a requirement to have a one hour meeting with your customer that you can't get away from. Right. Yeah. But you can totally make the meeting about something that's, that's much more high impact and, and, and much more efficient use of your time. Um, yeah. some of the things that, that are required, you know, may, may be something that have to come from your, your head of customer success. In that case, you need to advocate for yourself with them. Like, Hey, here's some of the things that I'm seeing that, that we, myself and, and, other CSMs could be doing better. And I just wanted to bring this to your attention or here's some places I feel like I'm spending a lot of time that I think could be spent other in other ways, you know, more efficiently, make sure you're communicating that to your head of customer success. Cause they might not know and, and yeah. they're not going to help you, you know, yeah. Should they know maybe, but you know, they might not. And so you need to, again, just control your narrative, be your own advocate, and, and make sure that they do know so that that they can that they can advocate for you with others to get budget and and exactly. you know whatever else you need to to make these things better but one thing that y- you said before we we went live you know on was and I thought it was just a, a super powerful statement I think it's a good way to sort of end this section which is yeah about where to it, you, you, it's about the the important things and yeah yeah. Yeah. No. I, I think sometimes we have a tendency uh, as people here to want, we want to automate like the most important things, and and we tend to do the the, the less le- least important things uh, we, we we do ourselves uh, manually, and of course this should be the other way around. I think we 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 uh, we touched on this. I mean these high impact things that are usually when we actually have this personal contact with the customer, 
those things we should not try to uh, remove or automate. We should uh, more in, in that case, if we try to do that, we need to understand why we're doing that for sure. And on the other hand, we should more look into these less uh, less impactful things that we spend a lot of time on and try to uh, move those away and automate those, deflect those, add resources or whatever it is. So I think that's... Uh, yeah, I think a lot of people, yeah. if I, you know, I, I yeah. think a lot of people are going to hear that and go, ah, oh, that's me. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I, yeah. I do that. You know, I, I, I get on a call with somebody, I, I, I walk them through some, you know, functional thing in the product. And then I try to, I send a survey later to try to do goal discovery, yeah. you know, and I get a 12% response rate and whatever, like, you know, it's like, you're you right. Know, Turn that around. I think it's very human. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I, th- I think that's why we have to talk about it because this is totally, I mean, if this wasn't common, then we wouldn't have to talk about it. It's just exactly. human nature. This is how we, we think and we operate. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it just is what it is. So if we can call yeah. attention to it, make it, you know, kind of keep it top of mind, you may start to recognize these patterns and then you can sort of break out of them. And, and that's, that's all we can do right? <laughs> um, is try Definitely. to break out of these patterns that, that end up not being, you know, super helpful for us. So yeah. really, so good stuff there. I think we need to wrap it lay up. out the, yeah. What are the, the, the three practical things, the takeaways? Um, and I'll let you start. Yeah. All right. So number one here, be super clear on what you are solving for when you want to scale your CSM work. Is it that you have too many customers per CSM? Is it that you have uh, retention issues? Is it that you have a huge potential expansion? Why is it? Be very clear on why uh, you want to scale. I think that's the starting point. Yeah, I think that's that's super important. Uh, just like anything, right? Um, yeah. I think the next thing uh, that the thing that I would say is, you know, make a list of what you should be doing. So simple. Make a list of what you should be doing. The high impact sort of appropriate experience centric things that you not, and I mean you as the CSM, the things that you need to be doing with your customer and just be super clear on that. Yeah, definitely. And on the flip side, also make a list of what you should not be doing. A to not do list, we yeah. call it at Impact Academy. And this list is where you should automate, you should deflect, maybe you should put this on, or add more resources, whatever you can do to try to limit uh, spending time on that list. So those are our three things. Thanks a lot and see you all soon. Hey, thanks for listening. Do you want to bring your customer success to the next level? check out Impact Academy. We have training programs for customer success managers and for leaders in customer success.